Hello, I'm Sharon English, and I'm going to be reading to you from my novel, Night in the World. It's a very windy day here in Nova Scotia. I'm enjoying the fire and appreciating its warmth very much. And it's a good time of year to think about night and darkness and what they mean to us. This book is about home, really. It's about um, how to be at home in such uncertain times when the future, um, our lives seem always in turmoil, when the world situation is very grave indeed. How to be at home when home itself seems unsure. And the book tells the story of three characters, each in their different ways, in their own unique ways, facing these struggles. And uh, one of the characters is a budding biologist who's studying moths. Um, and I'm going to read a section where she's thinking about kind of how this whole journey to studying moths started. There's a lot in the book about learning devotion and learning to listen and removing barriers between people and between ourselves and the natural world. So here's a short bit about Gabe thinking about how she got started on this journey. Polyphemus was the first moth she loved. On hot midsummer nights, when she and Jen were children, her family would gather in the backyard until late. You could legally light fires in the city back then, roast marshmallows, watch stars. She was always enchanted by the moths that flew to the porch lights, always scampered after them, and one night her father pinned a white cotton sheet to the clothesline and lit it with a black light bulb clamped to a tripod. It was an invitation, and Polyphemus arrived. Alongside the other moths, flies, and strange miniature creatures that crawled or perched on the sheet, Polyphemus was as our sun to the stars. It didn't even look like an insect, for it had fur. Gabe drew as close as she dared, looking to her father for assurance, trying not to squeal with excitement. If a cinnamon-colored teddy bear sprouted wings, magical wings, that might describe Polyphemus. Velvety, rippled, and banded, the wings stood wider than her outstretched hand. But most astonishing of all were the markings, for on each forewing sat a tiny, transparent circle, a window. How could that be? And what lay on the other side? Was it a different world like Alice found? Her father touched the wings carefully and they fanned open. Two great eyes peered back, their irises lemon yellow, their lids twilight blue. Fairy eyes, owl eyes, eyes made to see in the darkness, watching her. Thank you for watching, and I wish you a beautiful holiday season filled with love and light in the darkness.